Look, I'm a systems guy. My job is to make computers run really, really well. My job is also as a network guy is to make sure that they have good interconnectivity and when you want to see Google, it'll be there for you. But the bane of my existence are these people called programmers. Programmers are evil, terrible people and they sleep in basements and they eat junk food and well, they actually make me a lot of money because without programmers, I as a systems guy will have nothing to do. Any organization is going to have applications written by programmers that do important work. And in a lot of situations, you can have tens, hundreds, thousands of people who all have to access, for example, a single database. And this one database has to be accessed by different applications and different types of places. And it can get very, very confusing if every time you go into an application, you have to go, okay, where is that database? Search it by network name or something like that. What we can do instead is use something called Open Database Connectivity, or ODBC. ODBC is based mainly on a type of computer communication called Structured Query Language, or SQL. SQL allows just about any application to talk to just about any database. But one of the tricks is, is that application has to have some way to link to that database, and that's where ODBC comes into play. Let me give you an example of how this works. Here are all the computers used by salespeople by my company. In this computer right here is a database that keeps track of inventory and prices and all kinds of stuff that salespeople need to be able to look at in real time to be sure that they're giving, well, do we have it in stock and do we have it at a price that's acceptable? The problem is, is the only thing that's on these individual computers is a front end where they type in the inventory number and then it queries this database to figure out what's in there. These four computers are local into the office. This computer over here is a salesperson in Denver. Doesn't matter. We have to come up with a way that these, all of these computers can access this one particular database. ODBC creates a standard linkage format that allows us to do exactly that. Let me show you how ODBC works. Here's ODBC on a Windows system. This comes on every Windows computer. Now, there's all of these different types of links. We're going to do what's called a system DSN. Now, I'm not going to march through every one of these screens, but we'll get the main ones. So number one, we're going to say, what do we want as a data source? And by default, the only option you have is a SQL server. That's that big server out there. Now, we want to give this name a data source name. You don't type anything in here. You are given this information by the people who wrote the program, and of course they called it Timmy. The description doesn't matter. And then we have to actually connect to a particular SQL server. You'll be given some type of addressing to get there. This is not information you create. The people who make the database have to come up with this. So this next screen defines how we log into it. I'm just going to kind of skip over that for right now. Then if there's anything special that we need to place in, and again, it's the programmers who tell us how to do all this, we can set all this information in as well. And more programmer stuff. And then we hit finish, and that's all the information we need. The nice part about ODBC is most of the time, this is automatically updated when you install the front end. Part of the install program will actually set all this up for you. As computer nerds, about the only time I have to go in here is because there's a problem or because more than anything else, they're developing the program on the fly. And they're like, oh, Mike, change the server name from DBase32 to DBase33. Other than that, this is usually handled again through the installation and there's really not much for us to do. Now, ODBC is absolutely fantastic, but there are situations where we get into a much more complicated scenario. What I'm talking about in this case is what's known as the COM model. Now the COM, or really COM plus model, is developed by Windows and it's exclusively for Windows, although they try to get other people to do it. It's pretty much a Windows thing that allows us to share a lot more than databases. For example, we can have certain bits of file that can be stored on one server and passed around to everybody. So if I'm developing a particular program, I don't have to write every little single piece of it. 
but I go to all these other connections, including databases if you want, and put all that together. In order to deal with that, we have to use what's known as component services. Now trust me, the only time you're ever going to go in here is because some programmer said, please go into component services and type something. So let's at least get in there and take a look. Here's component services. Now you'll notice that component services also has event viewer and services. They're not part of component services. This is just good old event viewer and services. A lot of times when people are messing with this stuff, they need to watch events and they need to see what services are running. That's why that's there. So traditionally when we come in here, so we're going to go to computers, my computer, and there are all of these different settings. I want to give one example. So we have an application that's taking advantage of this. So what I'm going to do is right click on here and I'm going to create a new application. So in this case I'm just going to make an empty one and I'm going to call it Timmy. So this could be a library application that's just a bunch of particular files that my local application needs or it could be a server application where it's looking for a particular server to do stuff. We'll do a server. So it's going to say how do I log into this particular one. I'm going to leave it as interactive which means he will log in every time he fires up the application. And then I can actually set up different types of roles which defines, uh, for example, which people can delete the database or which other people can reset certain fields on the dialog boxes for the application. And I'm just going to leave that alone and I'm done. You will never, ever, ever go into component services without a programmer or an application developer on the phone with you. However, what is important is that you need to have some comfort with the interface and most importantly for the exam more than anything else, the only time you're ever going to deal with this one or ODBC is because probably some programmers asked you to.